What's going on guys and welcome to the very first episode of my realistic summer career mode. Yes, the wait is over. A brand new career mode begins today and I'm really excited for this probably final career mode of FIFA 22. I'm hoping to make it one of the best I've done in recent years and I'm really looking forward to it. Now, as the title suggests, this career mode is going to be all about realism. Now, I did a realistic career mode earlier on in the calendar year uh, with Southampton and spoilers, we moved on to another team after the Saints as well. And the theme of that series, as the clue was in the title of that one as well, was all about trying to keep it as realistic as possible. So what you could see happen in real life mirrored in the career career mode save and that is going to be the emphasis of this save as well the key is not going to be about winning as many trophies as possible establishing dominance and signing all the best wonder kids it's all about trying to keep it realistic i'll be doing my absolute best to maintain realism throughout the course of the save though of course i do want to point out that will be very difficult as we know in fifa career mode realism is something which is really hard to both attain and maintain due to the crazy ai transfer market ridiculous forms of ai teams as well it, it can be quite difficult to do that but I will do my very best I want to say I am human believe it or not so of course I will make mistakes here and there as well but I will do my best with the signings and also the sale destinations as well to keep them as realistic as possible I'll make mistakes from time to time that's only understandable but I'll do my absolute best to keep the emphasis of this save on primarily realism so the team we'll be using for this career mode is crystal palace now i know some of you guys will be sitting there saying hang on a minute millwall fan doing crystal palace yes i know but i can't deny it crystal palace are building a really exciting team at selhurst park there's no doubt about it i was so impressed with patrick vieira last season coming into his first job managerial job i should say uh, in the premier league taking over crystal palace and you know having a really successful first year the transfers have been good they've got a, a decent side and a really exciting team being built there as well. There are a couple of great young talents, Mark Guehi in the back line, Tarek Mitchell a left back as well, Elise who I'm a huge fan of as well, Abrecci Eze too. It's, it's got some good young talent this Crystal Palace team, no doubt about it. But there are some experienced old players here that have been around for a while. It's a really nice blend of experience, young talent and players in their prime as well. Players that are experienced that have been here for many years. You've got Martin Kelly, the former Liverpool defender, uh, Joel Ward of course, the long serving right back. Uh, James McArthur, the Scottish midfielder. James Tompkins as well. There are quite a few experienced players that have been here for many years now with Crystal Palace. They've got a nice little core going, but also a few good young players as well. It's a really nice team. And I thought it was a four-star team, you know, a mid-table side as they were last season too. They'd be a perfect team to take over. I was very impressed. I watched Crystal Palace a lot last season. I was very impressed with Patrick Vieira. They're building a really exciting team and I'm excited to see what they do in the upcoming years under Vieira as well. So again, uh, Crystal Palace side is a four-star team, like I alluded to a moment ago there. There are a couple of decent youngsters, but also quite a few players that are experienced as well. Now, obviously what I will be doing is trying to mirror what they've got in real life for this upcoming season with the signings, but also the sales as well. Uh, Czech Koyate is at a contract at the end of the first season when you start a new career, but he has signed an extension at Selhurst Park. So of course, I would extend his contract but as we know, uh, they've released quite a few players uh, this summer, Crystal Palace. So as I changed the position of Koyate from holding mid to centre half, you notice Palace have got a lot of midfielders and they've signed a new one as well. But I'm going to convert him to centre half here. He spent a bit of time playing centre half, to be fair. So I'm okay phasing him further back. They released quite a few players in the summer, um, Crystal Palace, including uh, Martin Kelly as well, who I decided to release as well. And quite a few others, such as Yaroslav Jack as well, the Polish center half. Unfortunately, what I didn't realize is you can only release <laughs> two players a season. I should have known this. It's been in the game for a while now. So I released Kelly and uh, I released Kirby as well. But I'm going to have to sell Yaroslav Yak. He was also a player that got released in the summer, but I will have to sell him, unfortunately. Uh, I'll try and sell him for one pound, though. You can't sell for free, but I'll try and sell him for one pound. If I can't sell him, then I'll swap him out of the club. But as for signings with Crystal Palace as well, as I mentioned, this series is all about realism. And thus, with that being the case, 
we will be signing the players the Crystal Palace are signed in real life. Now, I do want to point out, I'm recording this video on Wednesday the 13th of July, and by the time this video goes up, which will be Saturday morning, they might have made another signing, they might have made another sale. There's a lot of talk that uh, Wilfred Zahar might be on his way out of the club to AS Roma to play under Jose Mourinho. Now he's in the final year of his contract. Um, so that deal might have gone through by the time this video goes up. Again, I'm recording on Wednesday the 13th of July, so things might have changed in the next few days. But for now, he remains a Crystal Palace player but the three players Crystal Palace have signed at this time right now um, are, well, the, the two primary targets, uh, Sam Johnston, you've got the Derby County youngster who came in on the compensation deal. Sam Johnston, uh, the West Bromwich Albion goalkeeper, formerly of Manchester United, of course, he was signed on the free transfer. And also as well, Ducore, the RC Lons captain, was signed as well. Very excited to see how he gets on the Premier League. Very good, young, talented midfielder. So, yeah, excited to see that. But again, with sales of Crystal Palace, in the first season in particular, I, I I do want to try and keep it as realistic as possible. Now, if I was doing a career mode and just playing my own way, you know, right now I'd have James Tompkins, James MacArthur, Milivojevic, Ayu, Gaita, they'd all be on the transfer list, you know, because they're all in their 30s and I'd look for younger talents. But because in real life, these players have signed extensions or they just still have more years left on their contracts, um, I'm, I'm not going to sell them in the first season unless I really do think it might be considered realistic between now and the end of the window. For example, for example, I've been here for James Tompkins. He's 32 years old, 74 rated. He's third slash fourth choice center half in this Crystal Palace team for me. But he's staying at Crystal Palace for another year or so it does appear at this current point in time right now. And Espanyol is not a realistic destination. If I had a bid from, I don't know, like a top tier championship side or a low, uh, low rated Premier League side, then yeah, you know, I might possibly considering selling him to a Nottingham Forest, for example. But because that bid didn't come in, Espanyol is not a realistic destination. Can you see James Tompkins playing for Espanyol for the upcoming season? I can't. So because of that, it gets turned down. And that's going to be the key. It's not all about the signings being realistic, but also sale destinations as well. So of course, the first signing we would make was indeed Czech Ducore. He's Crystal Palace's big money man for this summer uh, window so far. Now, I believe the fee they spent was 18 million. So again, because of realism, that that's the fee I put in as well. You would have noticed Stadron had a bit accepted and quite a low bid as well. I could have got this guy for under 10 mil. So you might be sitting there thinking, why have we spent 18 million? Because it's realistic. It's the fee that Crystal Palace played in real life. So it's the fee I'll pay in the game as well. Once again, the key is going to be on realism for transfer fees and also for the sale destinations and the players we sign as well. So for Ducore, I spent most of my budget on the guy when I could have spent about a third and kept the remaining 20 mil for other players. But it wouldn't be as realistic. Crystal Palace spent an initial 18 million. I think there's some add-ons possible as well, depending on his success at Selhurst Park. But to me, yeah, 18 million is what they paid initially. So that's what I paid as well. And Ducore becomes our first signing. I am going to convert him to centre defensive mid as well. That is the position that Koyate would normally play. But of course, we're converting him to centre half because you've not got many centre backs here, especially after releasing Martin Kelly. And we're going to get rid of Yaroslav Yak as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to convert uh, Koyate to centre half and play Ducore as our successor for Koyate. I, I think that's what Crystal Palace are planning to do in real life anyway play him in the holding mid slot of their 4 3 3. So, uh, of course, uh, making new signings, we are going to primarily and initially sign the players the Crystal Palace have signed in real life. Uh, of course, we know they've got the new backup goalkeeper for this year for Gaita. That is indeed Sam Johnston, uh, released by West Bromwich Albion in the summer. Of course, in the game, we still have one year left in this deal, so I couldn't get him for free, unfortunately. But we spent the valuation again in 4.1 mil, and Johnston comes in on, I think it was a four-year deal, 26 grand a week. So quite a realistic contract out as well. And for Johnston, too, I, I think I will be having him off the bench in the first season. I'm a big fan of Geiter. I think as a shot stopper, he's really, really good. And I know he is six years older than Sam Johnston, but if you ask Crystal Palace fans, I think the majority would say they'd rather keep Geiter as the number one for the upcoming season and have Sam Johnston off the bench. And that's what I'm going to do as well. I think Geiter is slightly better than Sam Johnston, both in game and real life as well. So I think we probably will see Geiter starting next season for Crystal Palace between the sticks at Selhurst Park and Johnston as the backup. I would imagine 
imagine he'll get a lot of game time, possibly in the Cups, though. Sam Johnson obviously playing under 23 games as well. I wouldn't be surprised if midway through the season, say Guy has a struggling patch of form, Johnson gets some game time. I wouldn't be surprised to see that at all, but for now, I think I'll keep Guy as my number one, because I think that's what Crystal Palace are going to do in real life as well. And as for the final signing of today's episode as well, uh, Ebi Oe, uh, the Derby County youngster, was signed by Patrick Vieira. This is a compensation deal they agreed at the start of the transfer window. He's only uh, 18 years old in real life, 17 in the game as well. We spent £100,000, which is around what you'd probably consider for a tribunal compensation fee anyway. Plus, we gave Yaroslav Yak to Derby as well. I couldn't sell Yak, and because he's no longer at Crystal Palace, I didn't want to keep him either because it would be unrealistic. And I actually don't think Derby County would be an unrealistic destination for him. I believe he's ended up at a Swedish team, but uh, I don't plan on signing anyone from the Swedish league for realism purposes with uh, Crystal Palace. But I thought Derby County wouldn't be too unrealistic. Of course, they were relegated last season under Wayne Rooney to League One, uh, and uh, they got a, uh, a young Polish uh, defence-based player in Bielik as well. So I thought it wouldn't actually be that unrealistic, Derby County, had he ended up going there. In the end, of course, he's off to the Swedish League. But even so, that was mainly just done to get Yaroslav Yak out of the club because I, I won't be using him for this season. I wouldn't be able to use him as it'll be unrealistic. And Ebuoe is in for the new season. So for our first three signings of the summer window... Well, they're as realistic as they can get because they're the three signs the Crystal Pilots have made so far. Sam Johnson, our new backup goalkeeper for Gaita, Ebioe in from Derby County, and our big money signing Ducora as well. Again, this is going to be all about realism this save, and we're off to a perfect start. But that will end the first episode of the Realistic Summer Karima, guys. Big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you haven't, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of the Realistic Summer Career Mode very soon.